campus. So glad you're here. You, you know, you kind of feel for some of those other New Thought Centers across the country because they have to wait to the peace song before they do their swaying. No, we're, we're doing our, our moving and our swaying right from the, the very beginning, yes? Let's, let's gather up all that energy. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's a new day. Yeah. Whew. I have to say, I am actually honored that I have had the opportunity to rub elbows with some great leaders. One of them being our very own Dr. Reverend Temple Hayes. Hi, this is Jamie De La Luz, Youth and Family Minister of First Unity Spiritual Campus. And we are so excited about the Youth Expressing Spirit. Yes, our Youth and Family Ministry. I 
oddities, stranger crusade. And never wanna be with the novelties. Don't ever change, they wanted everything. They wanted everything. Say up on their rides, up on their rides, and never come down. Stay up on their rides, stay up on their rides, and never come down. Mama said, don't give up. It's a little complicated. I'm tied up, no more love. And I hate to see you waiting. They say it's all been done, but they haven't seen the best of me. Eh, eh, eh. And now one more ride, and it's gonna be a sight to see. Eh, eh, eh. Had to have high, high hopes for a living. Shooting for the stars, but I couldn't make a killing. Didn't have a dime, but I always had a vision. Always had a high this morning are we not wow welcome to first unity spiritual campus we are the most innovative electrifying amazing spiritual community in the world wow can you feel that can you feel that and we can answer that by saying one of the reasons that we are is because of all of you and how you are engaged and how you make comments and how you talk to the band and the voices and the teachers and and our media team it's because of the energy that you bring back to us that we go we got to step up and go a little further so here we are and we're we're knowing you're ready to go further today because you are say that with me we're going as far today as you can imagine let's go we're going as far today as you can imagine if you would please wherever you are in whatever place in the world stand and let us state uh, the grounding prayer by our co-founder charles fillmore of the unity movement we are now in the presence of pure being and immersed in the holy spirit of life love and wisdom we acknowledge thy presence and thy power, O oh, blessed Spirit. In thy divine wisdom, now erase our mortal limitations, and from thy pure substance of love, bring into manifestation our world according to thy perfect law. You know what's beautiful about that writing with Charles is he was such a great teacher, but he made it very clear. You have to erase first your mortal limitations. You have to erase those so that you can really experience the pure substance of love. So think about this week, what you would choose to erase in your life. Thank you, every one of you, for checking in on Facebook because of your activity. I believe we're close to 40,000 likes on our Facebook page. So we are delighted at your participation and your energy. And also, we appreciate Rick Schmill. Thank you for what you're doing with us and for us. Check out all of our activities during the week. We have many. We have different videos. We have different programs. We want you to stay engaged. And we have people this morning joining us from Bermuda, Eugene, Oregon, West Africa. We greet you. Thank you for checking in. And let us know in the comments where you are from. Because of the ability to reach people online, we just added a new course on mysticism by one of our core teachers and leaders of the Institute out of Montecito, California. So you want to check that out. It, it's amazing. We want to stay connected to you. So through prayer, through phone call, through email, 
through connection, all of that information, you're getting a slide up that shows you ways to participate and also ways for you to continue to give. Keep that flow going. Here at our campus, we honor seekers and healers and art 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 artists. And give them a week off and see what they do. Let's go again. Healers, seekers, artists, and activists. Today, there's a chaplain affirmation phone call at 1:11 p.m. on Zoom, and you have the information right there for you. Well, let's just give our band some love, shall we? And now we have Reverend Rebecca Joy Mooney giving us a great moment. A great moment. Girl, you look awesome. If you always do what you've always done, you always get what you've always got. I looked at it, and I did a quick trip down memory lane, thinking back to 2010, where I was, what was going on at that point in time. And I looked at it again, and I read it. If you always do, what you've always done, you always get what you've always got. So here we are, 2020. Woo! <laughs> 2020. Year of vision. Seeing everything the way it is. 2020. Vision. Well, <sighs> Some of those things that were being done are not done anymore. Hallelujah. So in this teaching mo moment that I wanted to share with you, the question is, what have you been doing all this time for years that has kept you in the same cycle of things. You are powerful. You are awesome. You are filled with light of God, peace, joy. All that in whom you were created should be just ecstatically showing in every part of your life. Is it? Are you living that life that you were created and born in this time to live? It is your time. It is your season. It's 2020. Now is the time. Remember those things back in high school that you made your little list and said that you were going to do when you grew up? You grown now, thank you, whoever said it. You grown now. And it's time to let go of all those things that were told to you by your mother and your father and your mammy and your pappy that you should be or you shouldn't be and just go ahead. Be who you were created to be. You have the power to do so. Hallelujah. You were already given the permission when you were put here in the first place. Let me back up a little bit. When you decided and chose to come, you gave yourself the permission and power to be who you are created to be. Oh, but I got problems. Oh, you don't know what I got to go through. Well, let me tell you, that problem 
has only as much power as you give it. It doesn't have any power over you. Oh, but I'm so scared. There's just been so many things that have happened, and I'm so scared. Fear. Well, Reverend Wanda talked about fear last week. If you didn't get it, go ahead and back and listen to that message because it was off the chain, by the way. But fear. Well, I look at fear. Instead of, how does it go? Facing, um, fa thank you. Thank you, April. Go ahead. False evidence appearing real. Yeah, you see, I couldn't even remember it because that's not what I go by. Okay? What I go by is forsaking everything that has ever come against you, told to you, that is not you, and always rolling forward. That's how I consider fear. But how am I going to do that, Rebecca? Well, you know, I already said in the beginning, you have the power of God within you. Love, light, peace, joy. The ability to have all the prosperity and abundance, happiness, contentment, which breeds success. All of that is yours. And don't worry, you're never alone. God is within you, working around you, all through you. And most importantly, you are a friend of God. Lisa, come on. Bring that in. You are a friend of God. Yeah. Who am I that you are mindful of me, that you hear me? When I call Is it true that you're thinking of me? How you love me It's amazing Who am I? Who am I that you are mindful of me? I'm a friend of God. I'm a friend of God. I am a friend of God. God calls me friend. Who am I? That God would call me friend. My that you are mindful of me. Is it true that, is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me, you love me. It's amazing, it's amazing, it's amazing, so amazing, it's amazing.
have called me friend. God Almighty. Because God surely does call you friend. Ah, who are you? What? Are you, like the song said, a friend of God? Are you a child of God? Don't get caught up in the name. Some that walk this earth today call the one presence and the one power by many names. Maybe Buddha, Jesus, Allah, maybe Goddess, Yehwah, Diana, Jehovah, maybe Great Spirit, maybe Father Sky or Mother Earth, maybe Christ, the Holy Spirit, God, or the Great I Am. Maybe the name you called God in your childhood has changed. Maybe there's a different name you use now. But the presence and the power is the same. No matter the name, we are all created by that divine intelligence, that divine conscience, consciousness, and that divine love. There's a funny story that Ron White, the comedian, tells about himself. He found himself one night in a bar fight, right in the middle of it. And when the arresting officer took him outside and said, you have the right to remain silent, he replied, I may have the right, but I do not have the ability. <laughs> so today, this day, this present moment, I share with you the knowing and the belief that you have the power and you have the right and you have the ability to be who you know yourself to be. The knowing in that still small space where God is, right there in your heart center. I want you to repeat after me. Say it with me. Use your name. Say your name. I am Kimberly. Come on now. Say your name. And then say with me. I am Kimberly. My mind is alert and open. My heart is open and receptive. I am blessed. I am able. I am prosperous. I am unique. 
I am exceptional. I am one of a kind. I am God expressed. I'm kind. I am love. I am light. And I'll close with the words of India R.E. I'm not the mistakes that I have made or any of the things that cause me pain. I am not the pieces of that dream I left behind. I'm not the color of my eyes, and I'm not the skin that's on the outside. I'm not my age. I'm not my race. My soul inside is all light. I am divinity defined. I am the God on the inside. I am a star, a piece of it all. I am light. So just breathe that in. As we allow the divinity inside each of us, the God or the goddess, inside you to shine out like a star, we are light. We are the light that shines bright, that illuminates the darkness when no other light will shine. And so it is. We have a surprise for you today. Our bass player is a voice today. <laughs> Welcome, Mitch, Thank to you. the stage. Thank you. We just want to encourage you to <clears throat> know who you are, as our previous speakers have said today. Know who you are because God knows your name. And whatever essence we put out into the universe becomes our name. Hmm, that was just a download. <laughs> whatever we put out there, that is what the universe recognizes us as. What do you want to be known as? What is your name? God knows your name. Yeah. You're not alone. You're not forgotten. God knows exactly where you are and who you are and whose you are. God knows my name. God knows my name. God knows my name. God knows my name.
kind of hard to come and say anything when the presence of God has been ushered into, into the room through music and ministry like that. Take a deep breath in. Plant both your feet on the ground. Repeat these simple words after me. God is good. I am good. God is powerful. I am powerful. Take a deep breath in. As you've heard me say before, that's the universe, that's the God, that's the source of all things, kissing love of life into you. That very spirit of God is alive within you. Search no further because the power of God is within you. Religion is often taught the gods without outside your reach, but all true good prophets of this earth have always told you search no further because the God of eternity is within you. Sam, beautiful, because God is beautiful. Sam, holy, because God, the source of my life is holy. Because he knows your name. She knows your name. It knows your name. Because the, before the foundations of this earth as we know it, 
you were in existence to come here and live a life just as you are. And so it is. What is your name? It's whatever you say. Amen. It is. Yes. Huh? It's whatever you say. It is. Not something that someone else has put on you, but it's what you put on yourself. And today, right now, in this moment, now in a few minutes it might be something else, but right now in this moment, in this moment, my name is Victory. <laughs>
Like somebody said this morning, if that doesn't move you, check in because you might be dead. I mean, that was just absolutely amazing. Let's give them a love shout and always remember to appreciate what's right in front of you. Yes? Ah, wow. So there was a local contractor and he was coming upon his retirement. And as he was getting ready to embark on this new journey, he took his favorite assistant and he said to him, you know, we're midway of working on this one final house and I'd love you to take it over and I'd love you to work with the project and I'd love you to manage it. And he said, and, and just make it really special. So his assistant initially was honored. He felt thrilled that he had been asked to participate in, in the final home of this man coming up on his retirement. But as he got more involved with it, he started kind of using less expensive wood. He started not putting the number of nails that were required. He started just doing what it took to get by. And at the end of his completion, he goes to his former boss and said, I have completed it. And he said, so here you go. And the man looked at him and said, here's the keys to your new house. Wow. Isn't that the truth often of humanity? Isn't that the space of humanity that we have this opportunity to know our name? We have this opportunity to know our victory and we do less than is required. We minimize what is possible. We work with concepts that are less than who we are. We give attentiveness in an ordinary way instead of the expanding self. This is your house. Say that with me. This is your house. There's one life. That life is God. And that life is our life right now. There is one life. That life is God. And that life is our life right now. Wherever you are right now, if you use that affirmative statement, I tell you the skies will part. You will truly wake up. There will be an energy field that comes throughout your body. You will transcend all that gossiping you've been doing into a greater place of love. And there will be this immersion of power that will take you over because you are no longer in the divide, you're into the space of the greater reality. You are building your house right now. And the foundation that you are laying is the foundation that you'll wake up 15 years, 20 years, 30 years from now, and you'll go, wow, solid as a rock, bum, bum, bum. Because you have built your consciousness, you see. You built that energy. There was an elder man and a young boy came up to him and said, you know, sir, I hope you have a good day. And the man looked at him and said, son, they're all good days. That's how they start out. They're all good days. But your day depends upon what you're willing to put into it. There's power in that level of affirmative knowing. Yes, you know, in Scripture it says, in the beginning, God. Some people say, well, I'm not really into the Bible or I don't really know that much. I'm not a Bible scholar. Well, just open it up and read the first page. <laughs> if you believe in the first page, then your life is a place that is unwavering and you believe in mysticism and magic. Because in the beginning, what? In the beginning, God, right? Created what? The heaven and the earth. Didn't say anything about hell, just saying. Did you read there that there's hell? No. No, that's a made-up thing, right? And so in the beginning, God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Doesn't that sound like they all go together? Yeah. It does to me. It doesn't say God created the earth and go to the fourth chapter and we'll talk about heaven. No, it says it's all there together. Is this working for you? Do you follow it? In the beginning, God. And what did God see? He saw, God saw, that it is good. 
It is good. And then God created Adam and Eve, okay? And they named everything after. Can you get that? I'm going to start you out really good. I'm going to lay before you a foundation of heaven and earth. And then I'm going to give you free will and see how you name everything after. What's in a name? A lot. What's in a name? A lot. You keep naming that mother-in-law, well, that's your experience. You keep naming that pain, that's your experience. You keep naming that thing that bugs you and tries you and frustrates you, well, that's your experience. What's in a name? Everything. Everything. Because you are immersed in that creation, and you are powerful more than you could ever imagine. And that's why I say often the law is millions of years old. Quit denying it. Work with it and see how it will work in your life. I love the story of the, th- of the two monks that they're walking by the river and they're kind of in training. And so they're walking by the, um, this river and they see this woman that she's incapable of getting to the other side. So one of the monks goes down and he lifts the woman up and he carries her across the river and drops her off there gently at the bank. And she was very appreciative, of course. So the two monks, they continue on their journey. And then when they get so far, the one other monk looked at him and said, I can't believe you did that. You know, we're not supposed to touch women. And the monk looked at him and said, you know what? I left that woman at the bank. You're the one that's still carrying her. You're the one that is still carrying her. And so in that, in that space, it's like as you continue to name whatever it is, you are still carrying it. You are still alerting your DNA, doing and never asking. You are alerting your vibratory field of you still believe in whatever this is that you say that most of the time you have not wanted. You know, Ralph Waldo Emerson said a, a beautiful statement. He said, All I have seen teaches me to trust the Creator for all I have not seen. All I have seen teaches me to trust the Creator for what I have not seen. Many a day I'm driving down the road and I'm first of all grateful that I still have my driver's license. You know, I went to jail a couple of times for driving on the wrong side of the road, hitting a transferred truck, running into a large tree in front of somebody's yard. The very tree that I used to make fun of everybody else that they hit that tree. Well, guess what? That was my karma. I hit that tree too. So I want you to think about that, of, of that, that space. But I'm driving down the road and I'm thinking, I am so grateful I have all my fingers and my toes. <laughs> I'm so grateful that things work. I'm so grateful that nothing's broken. I'm so grateful for the energy because I name that there is one life, and that life is God, and that life is my life right now. And it's that power that comes through me. It overrides that little personality that wants to talk me into settling for some ordinary, wants me to use less great wood and nails in creating my house. Oh, yeah, it wants to mess with me, but I'm going to stand tall in that vibration because to me, when I came out of the closet, that meant God was coming out of the closet too. And if you say you don't see God in your life, you don't, because that's what you keep naming. You see things in your life that you name with noise. You want to see more God in your life? Don't be afraid and ashamed to mention the name. Don't be afraid to tell your friends, this is who I am. People go, well, I'm not really into that, and, you know, I'm not really comfortable talking about God. And it's like, well, that's fine. You just won't be comfortable in my life because that's what one life is all about. It's okay for you, but I'm not toning down. In Matthew 13, 12, it says very simply, for whoever has to him, more will be given. And he will have, what? Abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Well, a lot of people teach that about prosperity. That's true. 
Because you name it, it will be true, right? But we're also talking about consciousness. We're talking about awareness. We're talking about the ability to see. We're talking about the reality of naming that every experience coming into your life, from the moment you name it, that will be what it will be for you. We're talking about that power for him that is aware that he's using a law and that immersion of energy, more will be given. So if I can see a little bit of heaven and I can affirm it and name it and claim it, guess what I'm going to see a lot of next week? A whole lot of heaven. A whole lot of energy. A whole lot of connections. Yes? There was a man that went on vacation and he made his checklist. And he went to the assistant and he said, you know, while I'm away, he said, here's the list. You know, and read it a couple times a day and you'll be fine. So he comes back, and no sooner than he got back and settled in his office, he looked around, and everything was just an absolute mess. And he went to his assistant, and he said, son, what happened? He said, well, I, I don't know. You, you told me to read the list twice, and that's what I did. He said, I meant you were supposed to do what was on the list. You are supposed to participate with the list. I know some of our beautiful teachers earlier were talking about you have written things on your list. Well, that's wonderful. But you are invited to be a participant of what is on the list. You want to be aware of what you have as the power of your written word. You want to be aware of what you said your dreams are, of what ignites you and what lights you up. But you're not just sitting around omen by a tree. You're not just waiting for somebody to come and pick you out of the line and say, I saw your list. I'm a psychic. I know what you want. No, you got to move your feet. You got to move your legs. You got to be willing to be moved. You got to put your energy into it. You got to be strong when you feel denied. You got to lift up when you don't see it working. You got to put on your reader glasses. You might have to buy a larger number, but you have to know that if you named it and you claimed it, you are going to live to see it. But you get ready and ready to open your arms. Yes, are you with me? Here we go. Ernest Holmes says, live in this affirmation. I attract to me all that I am. I have everybody on my team. I don't think he used the word team. I'm paraphrasing. I have everybody on my team that recognizes the energetic field of what I long for. I stand for a greater peace in my life. And my success does not depend upon what's going on or COVID or anything. My success doesn't depend on geographically where I live. My success depends on the fact of knowing that there's one life, that life is God, and that life is my life right now. Right now. I... I love the little story, and yes, I remember, I've told it a few times, but we hear it different, you know? We hear it different. And I love the little story that she lives not far from her church, and so she's walking there to Sunday school, and she's all in herself, you know? And so midway, she falls in a hole got mud all over her dress, and she was, had been saying, dear God, dear God, don't let me be late. Please don't let me be late for Sunday school. So she, she gets up, and she dusts herself off, and then she starts headed back to her, her little Sunday school, and she said, oh, dear Lord, don't let me be late, and don't let me be late, but don't you be pushing me either. Right. And so in that space, you know, that push you may be getting a push right now. You may have received a push this past week. You may have had a moment that is pushing you not to go down a level, but to go up a level. Not to go down a level, but what? To go up a level. I was with a little boy, two little boys, three and one, and I spend a lot of time with Miracle, and I love how children are. You know, they fall. They don't blame anybody. You ever notice that? 
You ever had a little baby slap you because you, you know, under your watch they fell or bumped their head? No. Do they? They don't blame, do they? They don't blame. What do they do? They get right back up. Can you imagine so many adults today? They fall one time and they say, oh, you know, God doesn't want this to happen. They, they have one little error thing and they can't let it go away. We should live the life like children do. I fall down, I get back up. There's a lot of adults, if they based upon falling when they were crawling, they would still be crawling around even today. Why? Because they don't get that life is about that ebb and flow. But it's about naming that it's heaven on earth. And when you fall, you get back up because you're so excited because you got up. And you're so excited because you're going to be stronger. And you're so excited because you're going to be better. And when you're one year old, you're so excited because you're able, able to walk just a few steps across the room because you can say, I did it. You see, energetically and innately as spirits, that's who we are. That's the energy of what we put out. That's what we're here for, is to always evolve into the understanding of more of the grace of one life. Amen. Clarity is knowing that what you dream of is yours. Clarity is knowing that what you dream of is yours. Or it wouldn't be in your heart, as I have said many times. I love the story of Raymond Charles Barker. He was a very successful minister in New York, religious science. I told this a couple of years ago in Black History Month, but Raymond, he goes to check into the hotel where they had the meetings. Well, they had 2,000 people a week. And so one morning, the hotel manager came up to him and said, you know, Mr. Barker, we have a problem. He said, what do you mean? He said, yeah, we have a problem. I've noticed that of the 2,000 people you have coming on Sunday, you have some black people in your community, and he said, and they're coming in the front door, and they're not able to do that. So we have a problem. And Dr. Barker looked at him and said, oh, we don't have a problem. And the man said, good, I'm so glad. I'm so glad you can see it that way. He said, no, we don't have a problem because this is our last Sunday. We will not be at a place that treats our people this way. And then he goes home and goes, what am I going to do with 2,000 people, right? Where am I going to put them for next week? And then he realized, like most good students do, oh, I said I. Ah, what am I going to do with these people instead of saying what is God going to do with this work you see and so he goes into meditation phone rings it's Alice Tully and Alice Tully said oh I'm so glad you answered you know I've been working on this beautiful building just for you and Raymond when do you want to start and he said what about next Sunday and she said there you go, it's yours for the taking, just like that. And then he said, well, I trust it's not going to be a problem because Emmett Fox is across the street at the Unity Center. And he said, so let me just call him and make sure. And he said, Emmett, this is what's happened, but I'm going to be right across the street from you. I want to make sure that's not a problem. And Emmett said, are you kidding me? This is perfect. That way, when people get upset with me, they don't even have to take the subway. They can just walk across the street, and they can do what they need to do because there's one life, and that life is God. What do you name and what do you claim in your life? And how do you continue to create the heaven that is yours for the taking? Thank you for being here today. It's been my pleasure to be with you. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> Maybe that was a reminder to say no on your... Hi, everyone. This is Zion Cristante, and I'm here at home with my two oldest daughters. Rihanna. Archer. We're talking about imagination, one of the 12 powers. 12 powers of unity. Imagination is really powerful, right? Yeah. And so I want to ask these young ladies, how do you use your imagination, Rhiannon? I use my imagination to picture a delicious food forest filled with mm, so many different fruits. And I'll eat them all up and my stomach will feel amazing. 
<laughs> Sounds good. Can I come too? Sure. <laughs> and what about you, Archer? What do you like to use your imagination for? When I get kind of like when there's nothing in doing well, the, when there's nothing in doing the house, well, there is stuff that to do in the house. It's just I don't want to do them. Then I use my imagination right here to picture a movie. Close your eyes, right? Mm -hmm. Wow, I, I do that sometimes too. And what do you think about in your movie? Sometimes mermaids, <laughs> and sometimes unicorns. I was just gonna say that. Wow. Sometimes princesses, fairies, mm. fairies. Do you do that too? Ponies. That's a great way to use our imagination, especially when there's a lot of craziness in the world. Definitely. Sometimes you need to just close your eyes, right? Mm -hmm. And picture a different scene. Mm -hmm. So God gave us the power of imagination so that we can imagine, image, use a new picture, and that that actually can become what our life is like. And we all have that power because God lives inside us. Everyone. We're each God's child. So go out into the world today and no matter what you see, know that you have the power of imagination. Mm -hmm. Whether you are out or you are inside your home, you can close your eyes and imagine a more beautiful world. And that may surprise you. It might show up just as you had imagined. We love you and we bless you. We behold the Christ inside you. as you inside you. From the Yes Youth Expressing Spirit program here at First Unity, we are so excited please check us out on Facebook and on Sunday mornings. This is Zion Cristante signing off. Everyone say bye-bye. Bye-bye. I am, I am my own special creation. So come take a look. Give me the hook or the ovation. It's mine. That I want to have a little pride in my world And it's not a place I have to hide in Life's not worth a damn Till you can say I am what I am
Yes. Woo. We're, we're thankful that you signed in, clicked, liked, and shared with us today. Wow, what a day we've had here today. You can go ahead and applaud again. Right. <laughs> applaud at home. Wow, what a difference this ministry is making all over God's creation. Because today, someone signed in from, uh, I think it was the Virgin Islands, and said hello, and actually said, where is this church? I have checked in twice this week, and I have found something. (laughs) Well, we're in St. Petersburg, Florida, and so if you want to come and visit, or if you want to move here, we have real estate agents and mortgage people that can get you here. (laughs) But also, too, know that we're making a difference on a local level. I want to share something with you. Uh, I walked in my office this morning and had two little love notes here. One person said, thank you very much for the love, the healing, the peace, and the guidance in my life. The other person said, and actually I had sent this personal letter, said, thank you very much for the great letter. It was nice to hear from my church family. Know that we are your family. Yes, thank you. And you know how much that works. I actually have um, some family up north, but I have an aunt and a first cousin. I'll give a a kiss, a blowout kiss to one of my favorite Aunt Margaret's and my only female cousin on that side, Paula. They said, Yesterday, they, I didn't even know they were watching us online, but they said, I've been, we've been watching online every Sunday because our church isn't able to have church. They said, we love what you're teaching. We love what your, t- your church here is teaching. And if we live there, that would be our church. That's how you are making a difference. And know that you make a difference when you do pin a little letter to us or an email. We love to hear from you. How do you support us? By giving your tithes and your offerings or your love offerings to this ministry and know that this ministry is making a difference around the world. God bless. Ah, And know that you don't necessarily have to be physically here in St. Petersburg, Florida to be part of our ministry and to be part of our spiritual community. We have thousands of people joining us from all over the world and each and every one of you is a part of our ministry just like the people who are right here in St. Petersburg, Florida. And we are so appreciative of you. And we have a free gift for you. So if you go to firstunity.org forward slash free gift, you can download your free gift from our website. And we thank you so much for being a part of our community. And at Illy, our Institute for Leadership and Lifelong Learning International, founded by our own Reverend Dr. Temple Hayes and Dr. Aileen Curtin, who is our Dean of Education, are offering a free class called Heart Thoughtful Parenting Tips and Strategies. That is available right now for download on illi.org. That's an I three L's and another I, dot org. So go there and grab your free class as our gift. You know, here, Reverend Dr. Temple Hayes proclaimed that 2020 was the year of the influencer at First Unity Spiritual Campus. And next Sunday is an influencer Sunday. We have Sister Dr. Jenna here joining us. She does a, a weekly television and radio show called Meditating America, and she will be here with us next Sunday, so you don't want to miss it. She was one of the founding members of the Oprah Belief Network, so make sure that you join us with Sister Dr. Jenna next Sunday. Then on Monday, we have a Zoom class with Dr. Debbie Roche called Empowering Tools for Emotional healing. So you don't want to miss that. So go ahead, go to our website, get registered for that. Then on Tuesday, I offer my monthly chakra class. This month, it's chakras and energy healing. So join me for chakras and energy healing next Tuesday on the 18th at 7 p.m. And then for that. It's going to be live stream and it's a fundraiser for the First Unity Spiritual Campus and thank you so much for going there 
and seeing it, we'll be posting this week some pictures from last year's presentation of the gospel according to John, Paul, George, and Ringo. So just to give you a little bit of a teaser and an idea of what's coming up, because you're going to be amazed and so excited. We all can't wait. So that's August the 27th at 7 p.m., and you surely do not want to miss that at all. So thank you so much for joining us. You know, another thing, uh, mark your calendar, September 23rd, 7 p.m., we're going to have AGNT live streaming. We're going to have Michael Beckwith doing a message online with us. So we are so blessed. Yes, we are. Wow, what about that peace song? What a, what a day to really think about what's in a name, right? What in a name. And what you claim. Let's remember the power of what we're all saying on the collective. Yes, here we go. power of God protects us. I am the power. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. For God is amazing. And all the time, God is amazing. There is one life. That life is, that life is our life right now. Woohoo! Okay. 
talking loud, not saying much. 